It is February the 8th, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. And you can find these videos and Fukushima presentations throughout the entire internet. And that live stream right now on look up Dana Durnford. Unit 4 fuel pool was a hoax. I just wanted to put that there before I forgot about it. Because Unit 4 fuel pool was 100% a hoax. And media and personalities throughout the media have come out and warned you that Unit 4. If, like David Suzuki said, if Unit 4 was to collapse, it's bye bye Japan and evacuate North America. Well, Unit 4 collapsed. And the hoax was to tell you that it didn't. And that if it did, it would. so you would give them all kinds of money and then you would think the danger was over. And it turns out the danger is not over. Unit 4 is gone. And so we are looking at an extinction event playing out in the Pacific Ocean. And Unit 2, let me show you something coming up here. Missing species, phytoplankton, krill, anchovies, sardines, squid, herring, salmon, mackerel, the birds, the insects, the whales. The whales and the birds have all starved to death. Mass mortality after mass mortality till there's almost nothing left. And there really truly isn't very much left. With the mass die-offs that are starved to death, everything else is already gone. The mass die-off was happening right away after Fukushima. The disposition came over from North America. The disposition came over from North America. Here's one of the many, many models. I'm going to stop this in a second. Boom. In just a couple of days, it had hit North America. This is the 17th of March. It happened on the 11th. Let's do that again. I stopped it accidentally. So now you can see by, if you look right above, uh, you see 21st-03-2011. And you'll see that starting to move now when I click it. Okay, 22nd. But at 22nd, it's already halfway across the Atlantic Ocean. Now, let's keep watching that for one second. That's the end of it there, but I'm going to stop it just in case it disappears when you do stop it. That's France modeling based upon just a couple of releases from a single reactor. A couple of releases from a single reactor. Canada went out and flew along the coastline on March the 18th. Several studies on the radioactive releases from the Fukushima, they were basing it up on a vented release from allegedly Unit 2. But remember, now we know all the reactors melted down. The Fukushima plume provided a nice opportunity to test radioactivity detection capabilities. This study, this Canadian study, focused on the arrival of the plume over southwestern British Columbia. So he flew that trajectory, you see. And here was the previous monitoring stations along the coastline. Every 15 minutes, they took a sample. And what they showed was a huge disposition on March the 20th and 19th that was confirmed because they went through the plume for 18 hours. And they never told the children to stay indoors. Uh, they never told people to shelter in place. This was their job. This is what we paid them to do. This is why we have them there. This is why we let them get away with sitting around with their thumbs up the ass for the last 50 years. Is in case one day we had an event. But what we were slow to comprehend, the majority of us, I'm not saying everybody, but the majority of us were slow to comprehend that there was other species that would get damaged and harmed. And even... You know, heavens forbid, an extinction event for many species. And so this is what we've seen happen now in five years was an extinction event for the Pacific Ocean. Everything is gone. It's all gone. We went out and documented it for 260 days, 15,000 miles of the coastline on the Fukushima Expeditions for Life. And you can find that documentation up at the nuclearproctologist.org. And I'll just bring that up for you. The nuclearproctologist.org. 
and the comparisons are shocking. It's just shocking. Chernobyl was nothing compared to Fukushima. Chernobyl is insignificant. Chernobyl is just a paper towel compared to Fukushima. Chernobyl lasted 10 days. Fukushima didn't stop. And so Chernobyl was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs in 10 days. If Chernobyl had lasted all the way up to the day, it would be equal to about a half a million Hiroshima bombs. And think about that in context, that it's just a paper towel or a candlestick compared to Fukushima. And Fu Fukushima had reactor cores on the roofs of the buildings. And I'm sure everybody is familiar with the pictures by now. And they should be anyway. We'll just burn through them. Just to make sure. We'll show you some more models. My computer catches up. This is Unit 1 coming up. That's 100% meltdown, melt through, and melt out. This is Unit 2. Unit 2 is 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. These, each of these are mini Chernobyls. This is Unit 3. It's 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. This was mixed oxide fuel. Two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. This is Unit 4. And we are just talking about that at the beginning to show Unit 4 is 100% as you can see, meltdown, melt through, melt out, total disintegration, complete annihilation, they stripped it all down, they built a structure alongside of it that doesn't touch the building, they do not touch each other, they don't support it, it's not a support, they do not support each other, these do, are not meant to touch each other, they were meant to put a crane in that and allegedly reach down, and this is what they said, they got to reach down into that fuel pool, yeah, and he said it was inside of that building, right? Remember, they brought in a truck to pump water in because the roof looks like that or because the roof looks like that. That's something you got to decide. I'm tired of saying the difference is pretty obvious to someone like me. We created 9 million bags, 1 ton bags. 9 million 1 ton bags. 9 million. That's 24 Empire State Buildings. 24. Each Empire State Building is 350,000 tons. So 9 million bags from those four buildings. This was in desperation that they collected up 9 million bags to try to slow down the carnage, but you can't stop it. It's airborne, it's in the environments, it's in the water, it's in your trees, it's in your pollen, it's in your community. It, it totally engulfed North America immediately and it has never stopped coming out of the jet streams come straight over here. The ocean currents uh, travel at five miles per hour. The Croatia current brings it right to Canadian coastline within 45 days. Those, those currents are well understood, but the rain brought it over within a few days. The jet streams brought it over within a few days. There is nowhere to run, there is nowhere to hide. There, there is no escaping what they got done to you. It's in your water tables dramatically. Pre-Fukushima. Um, Pre-Fukushima, we seen set now, post-Fukushima, we see 7,000 barrels a liter of tritium. But in tritium, 3H is man-made. This is not natural tritium from sunlight and hydrogen. This is man-made tritium. And pre-Fukushima, there was at best uh, one, two to three becquels per cubic meter, not per liter. There's a thousand liters in a cubic meter. Just think about, now we have strontium-90 as a normal in our drinking water in Canada. This is the Canadian drinking water standard. They pulled this particular one off their page after I blogged it out and it got traction. They put it up in another spot, but it doesn't look like that anymore. Oh, I done 131. The, and what you're looking at here, those um, strontium, iodine, and cesium, these are known as tracers. And what they mean is that everything else came in. If they showed up, then everything else is here. And so when they put tracers in as a drinking water standard, it meant everything else is there also. They don't travel by themselves. The iodine didn't say, hey, I'm going to Canada, and uh, americium, neptunium, and all them 
2,000 man-made radioactive elements that we know about. There's 10,000 classified. That's just North America. Who knows what China or India or Pakistan or Israel or any other country that's messing with this technology has created. Everything about nuclear has been a lie. Its entire existence based is predicated upon lies, bananas, potato chips, walking in the sunshine, getting on an airplane, sleeping next to somebody in order to confuse you and manipulate you and cause you to lose interest or cause you to cause a fight with people that were trying to explain it to you or cause you not to be able to understand it because it didn't come from your famous, your familiar sources that you consider as sacrosanct. I done on a radio show a couple of years ago and the host told me the only news he needs and that he gets is from the Huffington Post. You don't need anything else, it's all there. And it's such an absurd statement uh, that I hung up on him. I said, well, look, I can't talk to you if you're only going to use one source. And if you're going to use such a source, uh, such a disreputable reputation as the Huffington Post, the smear machine, the smut machine, this thing that has infiltrated every country and that has no substance whatsoever and it fills us up with celebrity gossip and nonsense that are irrelevant that is is totally irrelevant and a waste of every human's time it's a waste of your time you watch the movie you don't need to know any more about a celebrity if you watch the movie I don't watch it I don't watch TV I don't use TVs it's a weapon TV is a weapon you never, like when it comes to nuclear, you'll never see a debate. You won't have a one guy talking about the dangers of nuclear while another guy's telling you it's like a banana and a potato chip and walking in the sunshine. It's just, it don't clash, yeah? No, it don't clash. But what we ended up doing to ourselves was we let our guards down. The checks and balances were bought and paid for by the industry itself. The media controls is controlled by the industry. Their job is to sell whatever industry's sore thumb is that day, to, to bury it, to hide it, to manipulate it, to, to make it look like they were the good people, look like they had, and to give whatever the official government party line. But the government is supposed to be by the people for the people, but instead the government is against the people. The government comes out with every policy in the book that the people don't like and never comes out with a policy that people agree with. In mass. Because the government is there for the corporation. And the corporation is not supposed to exist in the entities that it do. And so nobody at TEPCO can really go to jail. Their corporate personhood. Just like Google can't go to jail. Eric Schmidt can't go to jail, get a criminal record, be denied entry because he committed crimes. No, Google gets a fine. But the people who cre created the crime can't be charged with a crime. So they're brought back up in the media and put up back up on a pedestal. And if they got stocks, the media will shake them. Meanwhile, they're a known criminal. They've been convicted many times, but all they got was a fine. But if you get a fine, you're a criminal. You got a criminal record. You can't do things. You can't get a job. The media will demonize you. Oh, he got caught smoking this. He got caught drinking and driving. He got caught blah, blah, blah. But yet never, ever put, like have Eric Schmidt up for an interview and said, Eric, you got fines, but you never got a criminal record because you hit behind corporate personhood, right, Eric? And so all the money you accumulated, you cu accumulated as a criminal because you were a criminal. You you ripped off all these people and were convicted and got and your company got a fine because under that structure you were able to get away with it. So you're a criminal in every sense of the word, Eric. But we have to put you up on the TV because that's what our bosses want. You can't see that's not going to happen. That won't work because everybody will turn on Google immediately and say, "Hey, wait a second, they're criminals." Well, the nuclear industry is the exact same way. The nuclear industry is using corporate personhood. So normally corporations would have a charter. And so if the corporation broke their charter, like pollution or abuse of the community or the people or the resources or their licensing, they can be arrested and their business will be cannibalized to pay restitution, outstanding debts and reparation of the land and everything else. And somebody else would fill up that void but because of a legal amendment to the slavery law, which has been in increments over decades by corporate lawyers flipped to give corporations certain aspects of the human rights, nobody can be held accountable. 
And because of that, now we have an extinction event. Because of that, now we can't even call him. We, we're only allowed to call it the corporation. Like, I can't call it the bad guy at the University of Victoria. I got to call it University of Victoria because that's a corporate personhood. I'm not allowed to call those people out. They're a corporate personhood. They can't get a criminal record. There's no one can hold them accountable. And that's why they hired that type of personality because they're maniacal. And all uh, the university can do is get a fine or get sued and pay out the lawsuit, but there's no harm comes to the people that perpetrated it. It's the same thing with Woods Hole. Like, think about this, I'm charged with a crime of harassing nuclear pukes, but I can't name them. I can't defend myself against the headlines. I can't come out and defend myself. I can't even talk about these people without being afraid of a knock on my door and being arrested. Who went out and tested the water instead of the marine life. We went and researched the marine life, the most vulnerable part of the ocean. They went way offshore and took water samples and told nobody there was nothing there. But we had it in the rainfall within the first couple of days in North America and forever after recorded. 20 million disintegrations in a liter of water by Simon Fraser. We had 200 times the limits for man-made radiation in Vancouver four days after. Many, 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 many. We've covered hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those headlines on this site. But what we show was now is that we have an extinction event and that we, we got to make changes. We got to make, it's too late for a debate anymore. The nuclear industry won't give you a debate. The media is not going to give you the debate. If the, the media puts up Woods Hole or University of Victoria, they're not going to have anybody else there to say, hey, wait a second. They get to say whatever they feel like, which is bananas and potato chips. And if there's any opposition, they would say, hey, wait a second, that's a lie. So they can't have opposition there. They can't have a debate there. They can't, right? And that's why they demonize me, because I teach people that it's not like a banana. And that anybody who says that is insulting you, and they know what they're doing to you. They know that they're telling you a lie, and that their job is to make you believe that lie. And so that you will come vilify people like me, who says different. Oh, Dana, I don't see you on TV, Dana. Well, i seen you in the media saying you're accused of death threats. And the people that charge me with criminal harassment, not death threats, put the headlines up on their website saying I was charged with death threats. But I'm not. They know that because they charged me with criminal harassment. But yet they put that up there to vilify me. So everybody would come out and attack me and repeat those words. And that's exactly what did happen, right? It was vicious and still is vicious vilification of me. I leave tomorrow morning to head to court. I mean, he stalked me twice in 2014 during the expedition. They tried to get me arrested. They, it didn't stick. There was no charges pressed against me. But then they went to the Victoria Police Department, a little tiny local police department in British Columbia, Canada, and found a bootleg and cheerleading lap dog um, and had me arrested in a slap suit in order so that the media can come out and demonize me. Why would the de media that never reports on a story like this ever all of a sudden want to do interviews with someone like me? How did that become a big story, see? Because they were going to accuse me of death threats and vilify me in the media. And that's what they done. And no, and no major alternative media outside of Jeff Rince have ever come out and defended me. No, no big medias. There's 60 articles wrote about it, though. But none of the main alternative media has come out to defend me, only Jeff Rince. That was it. Even the Alex Jones crew had me, I'd done a story, and they accused me of the death threats. They never bothered correcting that part, that I'm not charged with that, and that was meant to vilify me, that I was an innocent man vilified in the media death threats when I was charged with criminal harassment of nuclear pukes, of people who are telling people to go ahead and eat the fish, there's no radiation in it. That's murder. This is not about freedom of speech. This is about stopping the murder. This is about stopping the genocide. That's what it is with me anyway. I don't know about you, but that's what it is with me. Stop the genocide. These people are causing friends and families of mine to go ahead and eat the fish because they think these people are reputable, that they, have a, they work for a university, they wouldn't lie. But over the next couple of years, at the end of this year, won't be anything left in the Pacific Ocean. Everything out there is dying in mass. And that can't keep going on because everything is starved to death. 
The salmon never got up the river because there's no pack ice, a thousand year old pack ice left in the British Columbia Mountains because the tritium destroyed that. It doesn't allow the ice to crystallize as long with all the other radiation. It's not just the tritium. It just be the, it happened to be the flavor of the day that we're using. And tritium is water. <coughs> but it's pure energy. Every, these atoms, they pulse every second. Every second, hang on. Think about this inside your body, big there, that pulse, that big pulse. Every second, 60 seconds a minute, 1,440 minutes a day, three, and, but you're gathering it up, you're drinking it and consuming it and eating it. That's what happened to the animals. They were bioaccumulating it. You know, they're, they're foraging all the time at the surface on the ground. That's why the animals and the birds were impacted because they're, not many of them are dig deep into the ground. They're surface eaters, basically, right? And then they're pre if they're a predatory, then they're eating the animals that are bioaccumulating it. And it doesn't mean that they all die to cancer. It means there's 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies will show up before that. And that they become susceptible now to parasites and to pathogens and the viruses and the diseases and they even create that because their body now is so polluted it's displacing all the oxygen molecules and it's the pH is completely changed in those bodies I still got that other stream going because I, I started off I intended to come over and say hi to everybody but that's the way I go sometimes <laughs> going live is when you're live streaming just doing what I'm doing is so difficult, whether people realize it or not. It's so tricky to do the little things I do. Every little thing I do becomes just a, a neat trick to get done. Let me explain something to you, though. Let me explain to you that that is what they claim was the inside of Unit 4. This is the inside of Unit 4 on the ground. See how these buildings don't touch each other? They're not meant to touch each other. They never touched each other. But yet, uh, I see an activist post, Melissa Melton, claiming in her last article that these, this building was built to support it. That it's there to, to give it integrity. And I got no idea why she can't tell the difference or why she doesn't know it. Outside of the fact, she probably didn't look very far. But it's very damaging to have people out there in the alternative meeting ready articles saying that supports it. Because just that little causes fighting among people. And that if you don't know the difference, you shouldn't say it. But yet that's the claim. But these buildings don't touch each other. This pool does not exist inside of that building. It does not exist inside of that pool. This, these are official pictures. Look at the roof. Look at the walls. Look at the ceilings. Now you tell me. How does it fit into that, that picture there? And you see the big red truck, right? Why would you need that if it looked like that? You know what I'm saying, right? If it looks like that and it does, these are the official pictures, and that's the official picture too. On the other side of it, it looks like that, but does that mean that that is inside of it? No. And they built a structure there to deceive everybody, then they rolled out and said it looked like that on the inside. That it was like this. And then they claimed it was all gone. Yeah, it's all gone there, right? We know where it's gone. Gone in North America. Because that's what all the models shows. They looked at four spots along the coastline of British Columbia. So far, urchin die-offs at four sites along 200 miles. And a fifth site off California. And so they declared an extinction event. An extinction event. This is a map of Canada. And this is a map that I covered, that I created. This is all the coastline of Canada, from one arrow to the other arrow. That's what we covered for 260 days in that operation. And instead of being a gorgeous, unimaginable, unbelievable, healthy environment where every millimeter is jostling for life and the four million other species are kept at bay, it's naked and the other four million species didn't even try to recede the coastline. The other four million species 
didn't recede that coastline. Think about this tsunami map. This is where people died along the coastline of British Columbia. I'm sorry, of um, Japan. From the tsunami. They died from the tsunami. Now look at that map. Think about that. Now, you see the numbers. There's thousands of people and hundreds and, and people. Right along that 400 kilometer stretch, that's where people died from tsunami debris. From tsunami debris. From that wood chipper. This is where the nuclear power plants are. Yeah? Does it make more sense for you now? That's where the nuclear power plants are on that coastline. Okay, so we covered 15,000 miles in that boat. There's a map of it. And I'm going to show you something else that you've already seen many times, I'm sure. But that's tsunami debris. That's so important. It is un unbelievable, unimaginable how important it is to consider that when you talk about when you talk about the power plants and then when you talk about the debris along the coastline that killed all those people, it killed them because it looked like that. See? And that's why the nuclear power plant looks like that and that's why they come out and told you it looked like that. Because they know. They know it's an extinction event. Remember, Chernobyl, read that third line from the top, for the next 10 days, 400 Hiroshima bombs over 150,000 square miles of Europe and beyond. Europe and beyond. And so what that means is that right now you can't sell the land in parts of Ireland, Scotland, and UK. That you can't drink the milk in parts of Ireland, Scotland, UK. That you still, 28 years later because of Chernobyl, can't drink the milk or eat the meat from Scotland, Ireland, UK. Because of uh, Chernobyl. And Chernobyl was just a candlestick. We proved this endlessly. But, you know, think about Kafiana said 3 million children have permanent disabilities from Chernobyl. 3 million. And covered that into the preamble. And so the preamble up at YouTube that I posted uh, was in super high quality. <laughs> like a 40 second, hey, this particular live stream is coming. But you can't stream that kind of quality on the internet. <coughs> but it's exceptionally high quality. <coughs> and I put a, that headline there, I probably can't find it right now that I was just talking about. So here's another couple of headlines I want you to think about. Rain with 20 million particles. 20 million particles. A radioactive iodine per liter fell on the U.S. during poke, poke, post Fukushima. Post Fukushima. 20 million. 20 million. 20 million. Of iodine 131. Let me snap that up there again for you. 20 million iodine 131. So there's uh, 30 times, 10 times more iodine 132, 30 times more iodine 133, 31 times more iodine 129. And I can probably bring up some of that for you and make it a little easier for you to understand it. Yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, I created that big folder, didn't I? Let's look at the forecast. Here's an Australian forecast. March the 15th, 2011. East of Los Angeles by March the 18th. Uh, this forecast was um, by the Norwegian Institute for Research. Latest forecast had all of California on a radiation threat. And it looked like that. Um, and I can bring up that one for you and play it very quick if you want. And you want to hang on, give me a second. Anytime you're ready, Dana. Oh, here we go. And so once it hits, that's the end of it. Game over. Once it hit the coastline, once it went over your country, once it deposited 
This was a snowstorm that never disappears, but you can't see it. You can't breathe it or smell it or taste it or feel it or pick it up or throw rocks at it. Uh, but it's there, see? And it's permanently there till the end of time. It's recirculating like the forest fires. Like the forest fires we know comes across the ocean, is it, right? We know these are thousands of times bigger than what I'm talking about, what I'm showing you. And we know how that comes over and it lingers around North America for extended periods of time. Hey, buddy. It lingers around North America for extended periods of time. And let me just come back over to that. Hi, Raj. How you doing, buddy? Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. That's Roger. That's my buddy. And so think about the modeling from NOAA. This model is from NOAA. And that model is based upon 40 days. It's only based upon a couple of days releases from a single reactor. A couple of days releases from a single reactor. And it's not based upon all the elements. It's only based upon iodine-131 and cesium-137. And so... Like I showed you earlier in the broadcast is that we have f three one, let's just say three, you know, but we covered this many times, but not counting the fuel pools, which are reactors. And each of the reactors hold five million pounds and they all melted down, but no one put that in any of these models. These models are only based upon venting, venting from unitope. They're not based upon detonations. They're not based upon the explosions. They're not based upon... The rele actual releases, they're not based upon the thousands of elements, they're not based upon the time and, and uh, the five year is still coming editor. If you put all that in the model, obviously you wouldn't see the planet Earth ever again for a thousand years before it fell out of the upper and lower stratosphere. You had a 9.0 earthquake. It traveled through the country at 9,000 miles per hour. It was felt in Florida 30 minutes later. It shook the country for six minutes. It had three major 7.0 earthquakes within the first 40 minutes after that. It had a, uh, it was a thousand times worse than Haiti, 7,000 times worse than Christchurch. The tsunami came through the country at 600 miles per hour. It ripped up 400 miles of the coastline. But that tsunami, as you can see, the death, that's the maps of where people died along the coastline. That's 400 miles of the coastline. But look at uh, where the coastline actually went right around the entire island. That tsunami killed birds in Alaska uh, over around a couple of hundred thousand or, yeah, a couple of hundred thousand nesting birds uh, just above the high tide line were wiped out when it hit Alaska, North America. And we know someone in California was washed off the pier by the tsunami itself. And so the tsunami, it wasn't just, you got to realize that the tsunami was a 180 mile wide continental shelf that snapped. So it wasn't like a fine point. And so a 180 mile wide base start. Think about think about a, a asteroid 180 mile wide. I'm sorry, that's probably not a good one. But think about throwing a rock in the lake. You're going to throw a rock up in the air and it's going to come down and land in the lake. Now I want you to get a crane and I want you to pick up a 747 fully loaded with fuel and people and point it down with the engines going full steam and then you're going to snap the line and it's going to fly down and smash into the same spot where that little rock went three seconds before that. Do you think you could still see the waves from the rock in a couple in a half a second after it hits the water ever again? No. In concept of it obliterated those I know I'm all over the place sometimes the tsunamis were right along the coastlines, but look at the, look at the, I didn't bring that up for you. Let me bring that back up for you. Where the hell is all this stuff coming from, Dana? And so look at the tsunami done the damage right around the coastline, and look at, the, look at the reactors right around the coastline. Right? And so, no one can imagine Hang on. Uh, previously unpublished map from the government scientists showed Fukushima plume at Alaska coast, December 23rd. 
But we showed you the plume from the Canadian government coming up here and other institutions. That one was uh, Norwegian Institute for Ear Research. We just showed you Australia. Here's your RAD project. They got a nice pretty blue one. Yummy CCM. Then we got uh, Francis Institute for Radiological Protection showing studies of the plume coming in in North America. We got the Norwegian Institute again with another study, an updated study. Absorb radiation doses of 132 were 10 times higher because there's 10 times more 132. There was 30 times more 1 iodine 133 and there's 31 times more iodine 129. That has a 15 million year half life. That's the ratio created in the reactor. And so you don't hear about that stuff. You only hear about the tracer iodine 131 or the tracer cesium or the tracer strontium. But see, if you hear of the tracer, if they admit the tracer is there, all the other isotopes are there by proxy. Right? Like you say, iodine didn't come to Canada, and 132 went to Australia, and 133 went to New Zealand. Now they all travel together because that's what the jet stream does to it, right? And so not only that, but like the map shows you, it spreads it out because a gram of it produces more atoms than every grain of sand on every beach on the planet combined. Each reactor has 3,450 assemblies. Each assembly has 80 rods in it. Each rod is 18 pounds. And do you think they were run? Now, they only account for 1,100 rods. This is how much they've been working to deceive you, manipulate you, and trick you. They got you thinking there's only 1,100 rods, but each reactor took 5 million pounds. Two years later, they put it on the roof in what is known as the fuel pool. Does that mean now that it's no longer a reactor core, now it's just rods? No, it's still a reactor core. Many reactor cores, they kept it all on the site. The whole country was ripped apart. Once again, let me bring you back to the picture. In a second here, I'll bring it up for you when I find it. Of the tsunami debris. Here we go, here comes the tsunami debris. So this was a, a, a wood chipper. Went through 400 minimum. This is where this stuff, this is what killed the people along the 400 kilometers of the coastline. But at the same time, if a power plant loses power, every minute it loses an inch of water. Now, how long do you think it took them to get power into there? 11 hours? You think they got power back in there for 11 hours to run these great... Now, remember that a nuclear power plant needs a coal plant alongside of it. But think about... There's 20 foot, Empire State Building weighs 350,000 tons. They got 9 million one ton bags here. So that's 24 Empire State Buildings, 100 story buildings, out of four 10 story buildings. But that's just from the communities, that's not from the power plant that the cleanup is. So you'd be looking at billions of bags and you still would never get it all. You couldn't get it out of the ocean. So we're going to come over and say goodnight to everyone. And I think that's a pretty tight, remember? Hang on, wait for it. 7,000 Beckles a liter pre Fukushima studies. Let's bring them up before we call it a night. Pre Fukushima studies on tritium. Uh, tritium was 0.34 Beckles. Tritium radioactivity in uh, Alexandra in Egypt. Pre Fukushima, two Beckles, five Beckles. In uh, other countries, you see it's down to one or two Beckles. Every study pre Fukushima, it's down to nothing. You can go look these studies up. Right, Beckwell, cut just a handful of Beckwells. But that was from weapons fallout. That was from weapons testing. Now, Canada, 7,000 Beckwells a liter. That's 7 million in your hot tub. That's 3 million Beckwells when you're children and you get a bath. And so you bioaccumulate that. That's not like potassium, which is homeostasis. Your body regulates it. Your body doesn't have a homeostasis effect for man-made radiation. That's why we have terrorist laws. That's why we have nuclear holding sites. That's why we give them billions of dollars for each nuclear plant every year. That's why there's, that's why there's this big fear of dirty bombs. That's why they took away all your freedoms and all your liberties for the terrorists to get a dirty bomb and complete your, pollute your community with a pound. But millions and millions and millions now is coming out of 
uh, Fukushima until the end of time. It's hemorrhaging into the Pacific Ocean, and it's just a perpetual mass murdering machine. So I'll come over and say goodnight to everybody. Here we go. I'll come over and say goodnight. We got a steam in. We're heading down to court tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Terry Ann. Candace, Amthurs, Strontium Milks. Hey, I got it right for a change. My apologies, man. But you're doing such a good job. Hi, Shani Kenny Lane. Hi, honey. Thank you. Amthurs. Hey, folks. Oomph. And Jan Brooks. Hi, Jan. Miss Milky the Clown 1 on YouTube. And she's got a whole incredible amount of footage about Fukushima right from the get-go. Don't miss that spot. We got Samuel. Hi, Pam. And everybody else I'm probably never going to get to. I'm trying. Frank. And everybody. Good night, everybody. Hugs for everybody. We'll update you on the court when I come back if they don't lock me up. And throw away the key because we really pissed him off. Rattle Shark. Hi, everybody. Everybody I missed. My apologies. Uh, Miss Frill is out there. We know hard at work. And everybody else. Uh, once again, we'll be gone for a couple of days. We'll be back and we'll update you. Fukushima is an extinction event. That's documented. You can go over to ENE News. The latest headline there was the biggest mass mortality of birds on the coastline. I covered it a couple of videos back. Uh, it's frightening. Because there is no, even if the birds couldn't find anything in the ocean, it could normally come ashore and eat insects and eat um, the nutrients that would be on the rocks. The 6,000 algae, the 78 species of sea anemones, the 6,500 invertebrates without the backbones, the flora, the flana. The whole ecosystem that was there, the shellfish, is all gone. We documented it. You can find it at the nuclear proctologist.org. Hugs for everybody, and we'll catch you when we get back in a few days. Take care, folks.